passed away or are serving. Am I right? Did you come here to celebrate? I hope so. Because they fought and died for you to be able to stand here. Think about it today. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce Father Doug Boyd for the invocation. We ask your blessings, Lord, on your good people who come out today to honor all those 1.3 million people who have died in our wars, preserving freedom over these many years. We thank you. We thank them, Lord, and we honor them this day. And we just ask your blessings upon your people as we continue with our program. And maybe that we continue living uh, lives that are well lived. That's a good way to honor them. Mr. McGinley, would you bring the troops to attention, please? I'd like to introduce at this time Miss Jessie Sides for rendition of the national anthem. stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming At this time, I'd like to bring Mr. Mike Murphy up for the reading of the general orders. The 30th day of May, 1868, is designated for the purpose of strewing with flowers or otherwise decorating the graves of comrades who have died in defense of their country during the late rebellion and whose body now lie in every city village and hamlet churchyard in the land. In this observance, no form or ceremony is prescribed, but post and comrades will in their own way arrange such a fitting service as testimonials of respect as circumstances may permit. Let us then, at the time appointed, uh, gather around their sacred remains and garland the passionless mounds above them with the choicest flowers of springtime. Let us raise above them the dear old flag they save from dishonor. Let us in the solemn presence renew our pledge to aid and assist those who have had, have left among us the sacred charge upon our nation's gratitude, the soldiers, the sailors, the widows, and the orphan. It is the purpose of this commander in chief to inaugurate this observance with the hope that it will be kept up from year to year while a survivor of the war remains to honor the memory of his departed comrades. He earnestly desires the public press to lend the friendly aid and bringing this notice to the comrades in all parts of the country in time for simultaneous compliance there within. And signed John A. Logan, General, Grand Army of the Republic.
At this time, I'd like to introduce Mr. David Mishner. He's the president of Allegheny Cemeteries. Good morning, and welcome to Allegheny Cemetery. I invite all of you to stay after the service for some food, music, and a car show located near our fountain area. The Allegheny Cemetery Historical Association, which sponsors this event, is holding a prize raffle also, so please take part and participate. Allegheny is a nonprofit cemetery chartered in 1844 by the citizens of Pittsburgh and is governed by a non-compensated board of directors. Upon this sacred 300 acres, nearly 133,000 people have been laid to rest, more than 13,000 of whom are veterans of the armed forces from every American single conflict, including the Revolutionary War. Today is the day set aside to honorably memorialize these men and women. Our gathering at this site is a testament that their service is not only remembered, but honored with dignity and respect. We also have the opportunity, as we are gathered here today, to demonstrate to the many veterans standing along beside us a sign of our appreciation. So I respectfully request all active and retired men and women of the armed forces to step forward or tip your cap so the citizens of Pittsburgh can show our gratitude. Ladies and gentlemen, now that the veterans have stepped forward, I ask the rest of us Pittsburghers to step forward as well. Not to be recognized, but to recognize that we need to step forward, not just today, but every day, and do more for those veterans who stand beside us. Step forward and assist the different veterans associations just like the volunteers I saw here every day and evening this week, as men, women, children, seniors from our Shenley Retirement Center, as they walked around the grounds and placed the flags above the soldiers' graves. Step forward, citizens, whether that is to volunteer at the local VFWs or the veteran posts that reside in our neighborhoods, or if time is limited, then make a financial contribution to the organizations like the Disabled Veterans of America or the Wounded Warrior Project. I learned yesterday at another Memorial Day event that the city of Pittsburgh recently identified over 100 homeless veterans on our streets. We owe it to these men and women to provide them a safe and secure place that they can call home. Your contribution of time or money makes a difference, no matter how large or how small. Our field of flags that fly above the graves along this parade route to our monument is a small gesture of the unselfish and anonymous acts of kindness from the people who have made the decision to step forward. I thank all of you for taking those first steps by being here today to honor those who have gone before us. And I ask all of you to take the next step by doing a little more to those veterans who stand among us. May our veterans lie in peace. May their sacrifices never be forgotten. And may God bless America. Thank Amen. you. Okay, at this time I'd like to bring up Mr. Joe King. He's a Pittsburgh firefighter, is that a local one? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I, I am extremely humbled to have the opportunity to speak before you today. Uh, yeah, I've been a firefighter for over 40 years, but 40 some years ago, I returned from Southeast Asia as a U.S. Marine in Vietnam. Uh, 
I have never missed, you know, a Memorial Day or a Veterans Day in, in, in my lifetime. And I've often visited many, many times Arlington National Cemetery where I buried one of my own brothers <coughs> in Arlington in 2006. I just want to briefly uh, explain to everybody here today and those out there what the spirit of today is. It's remembering all the soldiers and Marines, the men and women, regardless of the branch of service, who have left us early in their lives. Uh, and, and they need to be memorialized. You know, when you look back almost a century ago, the immigrants, many of our immigrants, our own families through Ellis Island became a member or joined the country of the USA. Many of those men and women fought in World War I, World War II. And then we look at Korea, and then Vietnam and Desert Storm. And then after the, the catastrophic challenges that this country faced on 9-11-2001, our whole new younger generation had another sense of responsibility and had stepped up to the challenges. What you need to know is that over this century ago, and even today, a lot of our men and women are not laid on USA soil. Lest we forget the submariners who are on, in the bottom of some ocean, or a US Navy pilot who lost an air combat, those of the Arizona who were sunk December 7th, 1941. Most importantly, the men and women who were engaged June 6, 1944 on the shores of Normandy. Those are the men and women, the service people who have gave their life to this country. That each one of us need to be reminded that freedom is not free. With that, we have a saying, regardless of what branch of the service you're in, people live a lifetime in this country wondering if they ever made a difference. Men and women in the military do not have that problem. Thank you. Okay, at this time I'd like to bring up Commander John Dittmar from the United States Coast Guard. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. I would like to thank the St. Mary's and Allegheny Cemetery Association for inviting the Coast Guard to be here with all of you to honor and remember our military veterans. Mr. Hal Bauer, a veteran himself, and supporter of U.S. Coast Guard personnel in Iraq and Afghanistan, recently sent me the May issue of the VFW magazine. And in there was an article by the editors titled, The Meaning of Memorial Day. And quoting a portion of that article, I quote, whether done individually or collectively, it is the thought that counts. Personal as well as public acts of remembering are the ideal. Public displays of patriotism are essential if the notion of remembering war dead is to be instilled in the young." End quote. With that in mind, I want to thank all of you here today. You are all here collectively in a public display of patriotism to remember our nation's heroes. And I see all the children present who are here to witness this ceremony and carry on this annual day of remembrance. I am honored to share this important day with all of you. These hallowed grounds are a testament to the brave men and women who gave their lives to preserve our nation's freedom. Today is one day a year we can honor their sacrifice, but every day we live free, we cannot forget to remember the price they paid for our freedom. The names on the graves, headstones, and monuments here in the United States and in foreign lands 
are more than just names. They are fathers, mothers, daughters, and sons. They are shipmates and they are friends, and they are not forgotten. We are all connected because we are protected by the same freedom that they fought and died to preserve. I would like to share a name on a grave marker in a cemetery like this, thousands of miles away in the state of Washington. This is the name of a Coast Guardsman, and he is an American hero that you may not be familiar with. I am humbled to share part of his legacy with you. According to his official U.S. Coast Guard biography, Signalman First Class Douglas Monroe was the son of Mr. and Mrs. James Monroe of South Cleelum, Washington, which is about an hour from where I grew up. Also from his biography, I quote, Douglas A. Monroe died heroically on Guadalcanal 27 September 1942. Having volunteered to evacuate a detachment of Marines who were facing annihilation by an unanticipated large enemy force, he succeeded in safely extricating them and in doing so was mortally wounded. His Coast Guard biography also states that he remained conscious enough to utter his final words, did they get off? In his last moments, Douglas Monroe was not concerned with himself. He only thought of those Marines he was trying to save. And as you know, the Coast Guard is a life-saving service, whether it is times of peace or times of war. For his actions that day, Signalman First Class Monroe posthumously received the Medal of Honor. Every day, men and women in the U.S. Coast Guard are inspired by the leadership, values, and sacrifice of Douglas Monroe. His memory and his name are alive aboard the crew, aboard the Coast Guard cutter that bears his name. His legacy lives on in the Coast Guard recruits who learn our core values of honor, respect, and devotion duty located at Monroe Hall at Coast Guard Training Center Cape May. Today and every day, we can honor and remember our nation's heroes. This remembrance is not hard, it is the right thing to do, and it is what makes our country the land of the free and the home of the brave. Semper Paratus, thank you. I'd like to bring Father Doug Boyd back up here for a benediction. As the commander and firefighter captain Joe King reminded us to use our freedom that didn't come cheap. And it reminds us of what the Lord says to us in scripture, that you have saved us, Lord, for freedom, freedom to live good, righteous lives, not to remain in darkness or evil. So may we honor all those who have gone before us, who have died for our freedom. We thank them, Lord. We thank you for sending them. We ask your blessings on your dear people this day, your beloved. May we continue to do, complete the work you've given us to do, always honoring those who have died to preserve our freedom. We ask this in the name of the Holy God. Amen and amen. I'd like to have the Pittsburgh Firefighter Band play a musical rendition of Amazing Grace.
Well, thank you. Okay, at this time, I'd like to ask those of you who are able to stand, some can't, I understand that, remaining of you, would you please stand for a salute to the deceased? Mr. McGinley, would you please take over the ceremony? Lady, thank you. Good evening. Have a nice day.